Welcome once again to Church at Heart Mountain. It is my joy to bring you the teaching part of our service. I hope you already watched the praise and worship because we sure need to give the glory to his name. I want to welcome Linda Jones from Australia. Linda uh, wrote me at, uh, well, it's on Facebook, it's called an IM, and she told me that she's watching from Australia, and she's so hungry for the word. God bless you, Linda. Welcome to church. We're going to do our best to feed you the word of God. But you know what? I was meditating on Romans chapter 4. Remember, meditate, you open the scriptures, you mutter it, you utter it, you murmur it. You say it out loud and it goes out of your mouth and in your ear and into your spirit. And I was meditating on the verse. I'll put it up here. It's Romans 4, 3 in the NIV. It says, what does scripture say? And here's the part that I meditated on. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. And as I meditated upon that, I thought to myself, you know what? The faith of Abraham is obtainable. This is why the message today is called How to Get the Faith of Abraham. But let's examine this a little further because I want to help you get the faith of Abraham. It's it's obtainable. It's amazing. It's through Jesus. It's through the Word. So, what did Abraham believe he believed what God told him, period. <laughs> he was told that he was going to become the father of many nations. And he was old. And his wife was old. They were past having children. And yet God said, your children will be more than the sand of the sea, be more than the stars in the sky. Basically, and later on in uh, Romans 4, it says, he believed the word that it was told him, so shall your seed be. Abraham believed it. You can too. So let's go to that verse. I mean, let's go to another verse in Genesis 15. Let's find out what uh, Abraham was told by the Lord. Here it is back here in Genesis. Genesis 15. And again, I love this Berean study Bible. It's been amazing. And verse one, after these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram. See, back then he was called Abram. And after the covenant, which was made in the last part of this chapter, which as you read is pretty amazing. He was called Abraham. Uh, stop just for a minute. God took Abraham's name. God became the God of Abraham. And God gave Abram part of God's name. Abraham, the breath of God, was added to his name. And his name began to mean the father of many nations. Anyway, it's just great stuff. Too little time to go into all of it, but let's let's get right to the point here. Genesis 15, 1. After these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. So God's speaking to him in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. How many times when an angel appears or Jesus appeared or God appears, they had to say, don't be afraid. It's because God is so amazing and his glory is so overpowering and beautiful and bright. And the angels have come from the God's presence. You know, they have that same brightness. So over and over, you'll see in the Bible, don't be afraid. So here it is again. Verse one, after these events, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your very great reward. But Abram replied, I love the fact that he talks with God. He doesn't just shy away. He talks with God. You should do the same thing when you hear the voice of God. Don't shy away. Don't run away. Talk with him. I love this. But Abram replied, O Lord God, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. Verse 3, Abraham continued, Behold, you've given me no offspring. I want to say, you give me no offspring, sir. That's kind of what I would say to God for sure. So a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to Abram saying, now listen to this. This one shall not be your heir, but one who comes from your own body will be your heir. In other words, your own physical, biological son. And the Lord took him outside. This is great. And he said, now look to the heavens and count the stars if you are able. Stop. I tried that one time. After reading the scripture, I went outside and I tried to, tried to count the stars. 
I don't know, I got to like 950 and lost count. How do you count the stars? God was trying to put into Abram a faith vision that he began to see what God had promised. And God is good like that. He's very visual. So, verse 5 again, The Lord took him outside and said, Now look to the heavens, count the stars if you're able. Then he told him, So shall your offspring be. And that's what Abram believed. He believed the words, So shall your children or your offspring be. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. It's really simple. I'll tell you more in a minute. Abraham believed the Lord, and it was credited to him for righteousness. So here's what I was going to say. The thing is, lately I've been realizing that Abraham's faith wasn't huge. He had the same faith as anybody else who hears God's word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. The thing I've discovered about Abram is his doubt was so small. You can do this too. A great minister I used to listen to used to say, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. So think about the Word of God. Meditate in the Word of God. Fill your heart with the Word of God. But most important, believe it. Any one of us can do that. So we must decide that God's Word is true and that He loves us more than anything else. This is a subject for another day, but faith works through love. When you realize how much God loves you, let me put it to you this way. When my daughter Carrie was young, she used to always love to ride up on my shoulders. And uh, I had to watch the doorways, you know. But she loved it. And you know what? She knew that I loved her. We had such a great relationship. She didn't have to say, well, I believe and confess that my father will not drop me today. (laughs) Or she wouldn't have to say, and I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that my father is going to feed me today. When you find out, and we really need to find out, how much God loves us. God is love. Go back over some of the earlier teachings I've done, and you'll find out that, you know, in the Old Testament, God seemed so mean, but he really wasn't. He put all these things out. He says, love me. Love me. Put put me first. And if you do these things, you'll be blessed. And if you don't do these things, you'll be cursed. And so the people did the wrong things and the curses came. That's not God's best for the people. He wanted to bless them. He wants to bless you. So when Jesus took the entire curse upon the cross at Calvary, then the curse was taken away. That way now God can show us his true nature. And if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see the Father. Jesus said, everything I do, I see. I do what the Father does. I do what I, do what I see him doing. I speak what I hear him speaking. And so if you want to know the Father, look at Jesus. Oh, he raised the widow's uh, son from the dead. He fed the 5,000. The only times he really got mad is when they were blocking others from coming into the kingdom or desecrating his temple. Otherwise, he was love, love, love. God really loves you. We need to renew our minds to that. All right. So this faith of Abraham is simple, childlike faith. My sweet wife for the past year and a half, she has such childlike faith. After we moved here to Tennessee, she was the one that was like, God's going to take care of us. And you know what? He has. And it stretched my faith and has given me a lot more faith and trust and love for God because I see that He is faithful. You can do this too. All right. We can trust in Daddy, Abba, Father. It's what He's called in the New Testament. God is love. Mm, boy, we need to renew our minds to that. I'll have to teach on that. So, what else did Abraham believe? I'm glad you asked. Turn to Genesis 12, 1. Again, the Berean Study Bible. I just love this translation. Then the Lord said to Abram, now this is really interesting, leave your country, your kindred or your family in your father's household and go to the land I will show you. In other words, get up, pack your stuff and go. And of course, people would have asked, where are you going? He's like, I don't know. God told me to go and I'm going to go. Well, don't you know where you're going? No, he'll show me. You know, let me finish reading the verse, and i got to testify, testify for you. 
Then the Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your kindred, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Yeah, everybody, everybody knows Abraham. So that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed through you. Stop just for a moment. And that's why it's so important that the United States of America keeps blessing Israel. They're the descendants of Abraham. And it's true. Those who have blessed Israel through the years have been in turn to bless. We have been so blessed. The nations and the, uh, uh, well, the, I'll just call it the nations that have risen up against Jerusalem through the years have been crushed. The Medes and Persians, uh, the Romans, uh, it's it's a whole other story. Great book written by Lester Sumrall called uh, Jerusalem, where kingdoms go to die. Or no, where empires go to die. Great book, I recommend it. So, uh, last verse here. So Abram, depart, Abram departed as the Lord had directed him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. So I, I'm realizing as I'm meditating in Romans 4, that's why I recommend meditating in the scriptures. You get all kinds of revelation. Later on, it said the faith of Abraham, the faith. And I realized I have the faith of Abraham. I have exhibited the faith of Abraham in the past. Quick testimony. It was 1981, and the Lord, you know, it's not a voice, but you just begin to know. It occurs to you, and it, it doesn't go away. I got this impression, pack your house and move south. Okay. So we started packing the house. My former mother and father-in-law came over and packing boxes and newspaper wrapping dishes, only leaving out one setting for, where are you going? Don't know. <laughs> this really happened. I, I was so blessed to be able to obey God in this way. And it, it just bolsters my faith today to realize that I do have the faith of Abraham. And so, long story short, I thought we were going to move maybe to Tulsa, Oklahoma. There was a Bible school that I had applied to there. But it's a funny thing, I never got approved because I needed three references. And one of the deacons of the church that I was leading worship at didn't want me to leave. And so he didn't send in my recommendation. Thanks very much. But then again, it worked out really well because finally I got a phone call. I had done some worship for Charles and Francis Hunter Ministries in the Detroit area, and she called me up, and she said, hallelujah. <laughs> it was like, whoa, Francis Hunter's on the phone, kind of like talking to God, you know? <laughs> well, back in the day, you know, it really was so impressed. And she said, I would like you to come down here and lead worship. And so I said, may I bring my wife with me? She said, no evangelist has ever asked if he could bring his wife. Sure you can. So we went down there and had a wonderful week of camp meeting. Marilyn Hickey was preaching. Dr. Summerall was preaching. R.W. Shambach came. It was amazing. And toward the end of the week, we were supposed to go home. And, and Charles and Francis said, you know, but we're not sure we can afford it. And so they took us out to Denny's. Yeah, Denny's. The last night of the, of the meeting was over. And, and she said, you know, we really wanted somebody who, who could teach music and scriptures. I pulled out my briefcase, popped it open, and pulled out a thing that I just completed, music in the Bible. Almost identical to what she was looking for. She's like, wow. And she said, well, we were looking for somebody who could also teach music students. Popped up on my briefcase, showed her my schedule of all the music students that I had been teaching for several years. She's like, my goodness, I'm not going to let this young man go. When can you be here? I popped up on my briefcase because I forgot to tell you, after we got our stuff all packed, I called Mayflower and had them come out and give me an estimate. I had, I think it was 5,000 pounds of stuff, an estimate of what it would cost to move. All I needed to give them was a destination. God told me to move. I packed my house. I was ready when the opportunity came. That's the faith of Abraham. And you know what? You can have the faith of Abraham. And let's do one final scripture here, because I'll share with you that you may have already exhibited the faith of Abraham. Turn with me, please, to Second Corinth. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, wrong page here. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5.21, again in the Berean Study Bible, it says this, God made him 
that's God the Father, made him who knew no sin, that's Jesus, to be sin on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Listen to me. Do you believe that? If you're born again, you do. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, that's, that results in salvation. And so back to what Abraham said in Romans 4, 3, what does scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Once again, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. If you believe that, it was credited to you for righteousness in Christ. So see, you've already started in the faith of Abraham. But let me let me encourage you. You need to make a commitment. I passed over a scripture, but I've got to go right back to it. It's a great scripture in Second Chronicles. That's the one I was getting ready to read. Oh my goodness. Second Chronicles 16, 9, the first part of the verse. It says, this verse is totally amazing. It says, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. In other words, God is looking over all the earth right now. He'll pass over a million people, I heard a preacher say one time, to get to the one whose heart is committed. I want you to make a commitment of your heart to God today and to the Holy Scriptures. You need to make the Scriptures more important than anything else in your life. Make that commitment to God today and simply believe, and you will have the faith of Abraham. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray for the people today. I believe or receive, Father, that they are receiving this word and their faith is growing and they can see that Abraham had simple faith and they can see now, show them that all they have to do is reduce their doubt. We all have that seed, mustard seed of faith. Reduce our doubt, believe God, and all things are possible. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, I need your help to spread the gospel into all the earth. And so share this video with somebody. It's a simple faith message, but oh my goodness, it transformed my life. And it'll transform yours and those of your family and friends. So share it on YouTube, share it on Facebook. And then don't forget to write to us at heartmountministries at gmail.com. Share me your testimonies. Let's get to know each other. Let's get this relationship going. This is really becoming church. It really is. People are attending. People are growing. People are being fed. Their hunger is being satisfied because it's the word of God. And then, but don't forget to go to heartmountministries.com, our webpage. It tells a lot more about the ministry. It has a, uh, you can click on videos and see every video we've ever done. And then if you want to contribute to the ministry, uh, it's like taking an offering. Just go to that website and there's a nice donate button now that works beautifully and it has the same encryption as Amazon. It's very safe and many people are now joining. You know, if I got people to join us monthly and help supply, then we can keep doing this full time and I believe God wants us to kick it up and go to the next level. I'll be telling you more about that in the future. Anyway, God bless you. Maybe I'll get to the prayer series next week. I love you and see you then.